Welcome back. In our last video, we found out how to change scenes. So we added in this button. Uh, so we click on it and we can go to a different scene. And if we click on this button, we can go back to the original scene and play around with our different, you know, GUI objects that we've been making. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So the goal here is in this, this scene here is to add an actual table. And um, this is sort of the idea of what we're going to do is we're going to add in this object here is called a table view object. And inside of this object, it's actually reading instances of objects. So here, what I've done is I've created a really simple class called person, where they have a first name, a last name, and a birthday. And all that we're going to do is we're going to create a few instances of people and we'll put it into the table. In future videos, we'll look at how can we make the table editable, how can we add new people into it, how can we select people and delete them and do different things like that. But for this video, we're going to create a person class, create instances of people, and populate this table. So let's get started. So, oops. First thing we're gonna to need to do is build a person class. So I'm just gonna do a new, new Java class, and I call it person. And it's going to be a very simple person. Obviously, you can put anything you want in a table. Um, the secret is that you, uh, or the reason I'm doing a very simple one, is just to keep it quick and easy. So when you're using tables, if you ever want to edit the contents um, and have it, have it be a, a malleable thing, you can't use regular strings. You have to use something called a simple string property, which behaves a lot like a string but it also has uh, listeners uh, built into it that allow you to, uh, to make some changes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say private, and instead of string, I'm gonna say simple string property, first name, last name, and we'll do private local date birthday. And we'll add in our imports. And then we'll just create a very simple constructor. So I'm gonna say, insert code, constructor, and we'll populate each of these items. But what I'll pass in are strings, because that's what most programs operate with. And inside of my class, what I'll do is I'll convert these. So what I'm gonna do is I'll say, first name equals a new simple string property first name and um, then we can do this the most basic uh, get and set uh, methods here so I'll say insert code getters and setters, select them all, and it'll build it out for us. Okay, hit save. And then <clears throat> if we go into our, uh, into our table view fxml document here, so let's go into scene builder and I'm going to go down in my control section until I find the table view and drag it on. Now by default, it's going to give me two columns. I can make these a little bit wider, do all kinds of neat things like that. But if I want more columns, then what I have to do is I drag in another column. Okay. And call this one first name last name and the birthday okay and you can make these any size you want <clears throat> hit save now this uh, doesn't actually um, 
allow us to populate this yet. We're going to have to set that up inside of our controller, but this does allow us to uh, at least be able to communicate back and forth with the uh, with the object. So I'm going to hit save. We did that. Go back to NetBeans. So here in NetBeans, I'm going to go to the controller for our example of a table view controller. And at the class level, I'm going to create some instance variables so we can configure the table. And here's where I'm going to tell it that it's expecting a person object. Okay, so add our imports. Again, make sure you take the Java FX one, not the Java Swing one. And we have to set up each of the columns independently. So I say the parent class is person, and what they're going to, uh, what it's going to give us is a string, and I'm going to call it the first name column. We have to add our imports again. And this last one here, it returns a local date object. So we'll call this the birthday column. And we'll hit save. And now we can go back in to Scene Builder. And if I click on the first name column, here you see I can now say, well, that's the first name column. And that's the last name column. And that's the birthday column. And if I click on the table view itself, I can say that's a table view. Save. We can go back now. Now, whenever um, uh, uh, a scene is, is um, loaded, the first thing that it does is, is it calls a method called initialize. Okay, So let's go down here. There's this method called initialize. So if we want to initialize our scene, this is where we would do it. And so in here, what we're going to do is we're going to say first name column. And we'll say set the cell value factory. And we're going to say new property value. And then we're going to tell it what to look for. And the instance variable it's looking for is called first name. I have a typo in here. Uh, property value factory. There we go. And then we're going to do the same thing for the last name. And we're going to configure it to look for the last name information. And then the last one. Oops, you know, did I do this a little backwards? Do, 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 do. Did I do that? Oh, no, no, that's right. Okay. My apologies, sorry. I was uh, myself a little turned around there. And then the last one, we'll say the birthday Okay, there we go. So we've got that. So now that allows it. Uh, did I spell this incorrectly? No. What's going on?
So here it's person and a local date. Set cell factory cell value. There we go. Okay. And then <clears throat> that sets up our columns. So let's add a little. And now the thing is here, we want to load some uh, load some data. So I'm going to make a little method to do that for us. So load the dummy data. And I'm going to say table view. Set the items. And I'm going to create this uh, goofy little method called get people. So let's go down here and create it. Okay, and the uh, the method here, um, what it's going to do is um, it creates an observable list. Now you may remember, I think I've mentioned this in previous videos, but an observable list is a lot like an array list. It behaves a lot like an array list, but it's designed um, with some special features for uh, for the GUI environment. So. Here's what I'm going to do. I'll set up an observable list of person objects. Did I spell it incorrectly? I'm going to say equals fx collections. Now we have this observable array list. Um, I'm just going to say people add, and in here I can say new person, and we'll put in uh, Mr. Frank Sinatra. Sinatra, and he was born 1915 in December. And we can do the same thing maybe with a couple others. So I looked up these dates, so they're actually they're actually real dates. Okay, there we go. So now we have, uh, just have a list of people, we just have to return it, return people, and this method will be happy. So let's run our program at this point. Go to our table view, and oh, we didn't get quite what we wanted. Uh, we've got uh, the birthdays correct, but it came back and it said string property um, because we have these simple string objects um, being returned. So all we have to do is go into our person class and let's uh, let's update these slightly. So what we need is public. We need a way to get a string. Actually, let's try. I do a simple. Oh, 
I didn't like that simple string pattern. Now if we run it. No, no, it doesn't like that. Okay. Definitely still didn't like it. Okay, let's change them back to strings. Let's save. All right, and in the person class, we're just gonna add in some methods that will return strings instead of simple strings. Whoops. Get first name. This get method, what it does is it, um, why is that complaining? It's already defined, yes, but it's not returning a string. All right, well, let's do this then. Okay, try that one more time. Sorry about the delay there. But now we can see it returns the strings. So we can see their names and their birthdays uh, in a table. And the neat thing is the tables uh, right out of the box, they come with automatic sorting. So we can go, you know, oldest to youngest or youngest to oldest. We can sort by last names, first names. Uh, table views are really quite, uh, quite fantastic. So there you have it. I'll upload this to GitHub right now, and then um, you can start playing around with it. Okay, it looks like it's pushing. Let's just go check and make sure everything's good on GitHub. So again, if you ever want to get these files, you just go to github slash jarewrite. You're gonna click on repositories, go to our GUI demo. And you can see here it says added table view objects. So that was our last update. And in here we can see the person file and the uh, example of a table view controller. You click on it here's the actual code. So looks like we're all good. See you in the next video when we start adding more functionality to our tables.